So um, again, I tried to look up some websites so that if you guys want to practice at home as well, and I looked up some strategies for you, some reading strategies and uh, what good readers do, because I know that the, the last time we did a little bit of a, a times test, I told the, the, new two, the two new guys, um, and good readers, they use these strategies to understand reading passages. So um, inferences. They make inferences to draw conclusions from information. And inf ever, anyone know what an inference is? What is an inference? I don't know. It's like an educated guess, like a, coming to a conclusion with some information to that. Yeah, so you use information from the passage to make a guess. Um, it's almost like a prediction. So pretty much, um, it's something that's that's not said. So if I were to say. Um, that you had your hair pulled back in a ponytail, what am I inferring? Your hair is what? Long, tied up. Long? Who says long? Okay. Yeah, long. Do you understand? So I'm not <laughs> saying your hair is long. I'm saying that it's, it's pulled back. So you can't have short hair if it's pulled back. Does that make sense? OK. So um, they predict. Um, so as you're reading, uh, and a lot of people that, you know, when you read, you're doing these things without even realizing realizing that you're doing it. You're predicting what's going to happen next. Okay? Everyone knows what a prediction is. Like when you watch the football games, who's going to win? Yeah. Baseball, whatever your sport is. Um, summarize. That's important. That's a really important one. That's basically what we're going to do each time you know we do any kind of a reading. You're summarizing what you're reading. Uh, reading. You're explaining it in your own words, what the text is about. And remember, I asked you if you're going to do a longer passage, which the ones that we're looking at aren't long, to number them. Because as you go back, that's what that chunking paper is about that I just handed to you guys. You're, you're making it into smaller parts. And as you're reading each paragraph or whatever you're reading, you're kind of just saying, what did I just read? What is it about? OK? And visualizing, making mental images. Um, so if, let's say, um, when you watch a movie, they say books are better than movies. And when you watch a movie, you're seeing it. Um, I know that we're reading um, Wonder. Did you guys see the movie Wonder? The little boy, he has, no one watches the good movies like that. Um, OK, so. Uh, I watch war movies. War movies? American <laughs> Sniper? Oh, yes. I watched that one, actually. OK. Um, so that, wasn't that a book? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. So, uh, so you don't watch one. I can't think of a book that goes on. Stephen King? Doesn't he write, he used to write? Oh my god, I'm so old. All right. So, I've heard of an omelet work book. Okay, so sometimes they say the books are better because you actually can visualize it, and then when they make the movie, the producer vision puts it in their own spin or whatever. So visualizing is basically you're visualizing what the setting looks like, what the characters look like, and what the plot looks like, and all the actions. Okay. So um, as you're reading, visualize. So this a lot of this is um, they say not for uh, realistic. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, for not fiction, nonfiction. Okay, because when you're reading nonfiction, you can make it anything you want. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so again, things that good readers do. Any questions? No. Okay. And then this one I went over with you guys: um, multiple choice test strategies. And I, I kind of, um, I, I think it's stuff that you guys already know, but I tried to star the really important things. Um, number five, I think you guys should definitely do that first. What does it say, somebody? Answer the questions you know first. Answer the questions you know first. Make sure that you, you've on the test that you answered on the correct line, okay? Again, time test, you want to definitely do the ones that you know. Cross out the answers um, when you're reading the questions that you know aren't the answers. And I know this is this sounds obvious, but um, I can tell you as a teacher, there are sometimes answers that are definitely two look correct, and I'll think it's one, and then 
you know, we get the, the test back and, and it's the other one. So you have to pick the better of the two. There's usually two that are really close. There are two that are really obviously wrong. Okay, pick the better of the two. Okay, um, this no blank spot, no blank answers. Make sure you answer every single one. Okay, um, and I told you guys this too for the new guys. Go with your first response. If you don't know the answer and you put something down. Try not to erase it unless you go back and you say, oh wait, I know that one. If you absolutely don't know it, you just don't think you know it, and you put down an answer, try not to erase it, because you're usually right with your first gut, with your instinct, okay? And I'm telling you again, I've been teaching 22 years, normally when kids erase their answer, they're usually wrong the second time, okay? All right. Um, Read every option. Sometimes when tests, people make up tests, and I can tell you again from giving these ridiculous tests every year, people who make up tests, they make really good wrong answers, okay? So you really wanna read the answers fully, all of them, okay? Make sure you pick the answer that is right, not sounds right. Okay, and I know it, this sounds redundant, and I'm sorry for going over this again, but um, we're here, I'm not here to actually teach you, I'm here to show you, tell you how to pass the test. And honestly, like I watch kids make mistakes all the time, and it's so frustrating, because that's really how to pass the test. That's really how to pass the test. Because you guys know what you're doing. You know, I mean, I was here with you guys last week and you did a great job. The mistake, some of the mistakes that we make are silly. They're, they're there, the answers are there. Okay? No questions, anything? So I also looked online and um, there's really, I looked for like different things that you guys, there's nothing, like you guys aren't studying for a particular thing, right? Like you're not looking for any fire, so we talked about this. Yeah. You're just practicing. Um, so there's a there's a website. Um, I don't know if you guys, because this this book is pretty much done as of like we're gonna go we're gonna blow through this. Um, is anybody interested in practicing beyond this with the reading? The only website I was using for a little bit back Read. you know back before the the uh, what was it? Old Testament being able with it. Yeah. For a couple months before that, I think it's like fire.org or something like that. It gives you like practice tests. And there's also it's, books you can buy. Yeah, hold on, this was just a reading yeah. comprehension. A couple books. This is reading comprehension. Read it, answer comprehension test. Just, just, just like what's in here. So I, I was going to write it down for you guys. Okay? Yeah, um, you sure. would have to just sign up, but it's free. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, and again, like I said, um, so it's called uh, readworks.org. And you basically, um, that's where I would, I would pull the stuff that I would bring in here, and I would put the highest grade, which would, I, I don't know, I wouldn't do high school. But. So you would do comprehension, whatever you're interested in, you read it, answer the questions. You don't need to do long answer, you need to do uh, multiple choice. And I would just, I would, I would really practice more than, more than here, because this is once a week. to be able to follow directions for the, the guys that weren't here. 
Um, we had gotten up to page um, 28 in the reading comp. And basically, they, um, they're testing your ability to follow directions. Okay, so we, were, uh, we did preparing foods for storage. You guys did really well. And we're on reading comprehension set six. Anybody want a highlighter? I'm going to give you three minutes. Three minute timer? Three minute timer. Ten seconds. Time. Okay, stop for a second. Just look up. I, obviously, I'm doing that on purpose. I want you guys to feel pressure. I want you guys to see that you're going to be nervous the day of the test. You're going to be really nervous. So. No, I'm sorry. I'm just going to focus. Just talking. Um, I want you to feel that. Okay. I want you to get used to feeling pressure like that. All right. Because the day of the test, you're not going to have me to say stop, go back and read. All right. Calm down, go back and read it, and then answer the questions. You have all the time that you need. Okay? And remember, I think you said you have like five hours. Okay? So just take your time and read. Do you feel better now? Mm-hmm. Feel better now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hop. Mm -hmm. I gotta get you used to it. You said you took the SATs, right? Yeah. That was time. Doesn't mean I enjoyed it. I know. <laughs> I feel like I have ADHD or something when I read. Like, I can't just start, but I just can't start. <laughs> you gotta read it like three times, bro. It's okay. It's okay. Do that shit too. I only did one. Also, does it No, no, you so go back and do it again. I just wanted you to get used to being time. Doesn't help me that like, I just got every single one wrong. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Now go back, read it, and do the answers. And check out what he is. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm going We're still doing question five to seven, right? You're doing, um, yeah, five to seven. <sighs> and you missed being time, so you got lucky.
guys have to know all this stuff? Have to do? You have to. Oh, um, I don't think you have to like memorize it. just talking so you keep reading okay I had to go back and forth I don't know how many times I got five wrong and I had to go back it's like a lot of if ands or buts and stuff yeah yeah right, so just to let you know I absolutely got five wrong and then looked at the answer and then had to read why I got it wrong I think the reason why they're making it more difficult is so that you really read the answer and then you go back and find, I mean, read the question and go back and find the answer in the paragraphs to get used to doing it. Extending into the top story, except those stair shafts, which the stairs do not continue to the roof. So, 
So that right there, except those stair shafts and not continue to move, shall be carried to at least two feet above the roof. So just because it doesn't extend to the roof doesn't mean it's not the top story. You know what I'm saying? So, say that again? Shafts extend to the said. top story, yes. except those stair shafts in which the stairs do not continue to the roof. But you don't look at the except part because it's talking about stairs. It's still, well, it's talking about stair shaft. It's, that's still another form of a shaft that doesn't extend to the to the roof to the um, to the roof. So how you know what I'm saying? So it, I feel like it should be. Here. Yeah. So the except is where it's not required. Right. Yeah. So that's why it's said. Well, no. I mean, if you, if you look at it, if you look at if you look for the if you look for the skylight, the except. Every shaft extending above the roof, except open shaft and elevator shaft, shall be enclosed at the top with a roof of material having a fire resistance for at least one hour and a metal skylight. So why why are we? So that's that's where I got thrown off. But I think the except is is where it stops, and then that's why it's not required because everything that goes. Um, Shaft extending into the top story, except sh the ones that the stairs do not continue to the roof. So which ones don't require to have a skylight? Um, shaft extending into the stop, shafts extending into the stop top story, except, ex uh, <laughs> except those stair shafts in which the stairs do not continue to the roof. So right, so look, so every so every shaft extending above the roof, except open shafts and elevator shafts. So except open shafts and elevator shafts is gonna give you why why it's not required to have a skylight, right? Because yeah. open shafts and elevator shafts are not required to have a skylight. And what I'm just saying is that except stair shafts in which the stairs do not continue to the roof shall be carried through and at least two feet above the roof. That's what I, so when it said accept those uh, stair shafts, that's why <laughs> it should be it should be me. Because you're still at the top story, you're just not extending into the roof. And it's saying it's saying that stair shaft, except stair shafts. And yeah, it's an elevator shaft. It's not a stair shaft. You know what I'm saying? So they're two different things. Yeah, they're, they're saying one's an elevator shaft, right. one's a yeah, stair shaft. Right. Right. Yeah. So you gotta use both both uh, right. sentences. One, one. The second sentence helps answer the first part. The first part, and then the right. Second, the first sentence helps answer the second part. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I want to know who makes these questions. <laughs> <laughs> but they do. See how they do make answers sound really good for certain. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Really right. Um. Okay. So for six, that's the one you had hard time. Um, so cool. um, I, I try to find the uh, square foot. Anybody get six? I put B. Okay. I put B. Oh, I put B. Right? Yes. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Can it's I get an explanation? <laughs> uh, um, uh, it I'll, explains I'll it in it sentence. Down. I got you. Explain that. Um, I just find that I didn't underline. Oh, someone didn't underline. Hmm. Yeah, I got lazy with this one. So well, maybe you'd be able to go back more quickly if you underlined. We're also doing it under a time crunch. No, you were allowed to go back and do it again. So, you're right, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that did underline can go back? Who um, guessed? I guess. Good guess. No, I no, I guess C. Oh, not so good guess. Skylights over their shafts shall have an area not less than one tenth of the area, or sorry, not less than one tenth of the area of the shaft on the top story, but shall have an area not less than fifteen square feet in area. Am I right? It's like the only thing with measurements in the paragraph, so I thought it had to. That's what you just like put it like whatever was supposed to like yeah. feet. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So you're saying if you estimate um, which one? So 
so it'll be. Um, it's five feet by four feet. Four and a half feet by three and a half feet. And the only other one I would, uh, it's not four by four. They don't say anything about four by four or four by three. So, four and a half. They don't say anything about four and a half. <laughs> Hold on, but that means that there would be a couple, you're telling me A and D wouldn't fit into this if we did the math? I had D, so. 15 feet by 6 I'm feet. I'm skeptical. This book had a couple wrong answers last time. I was just saying. <laughs> it said it shall not be less than 15 square uh, <laughs> square feet, so I'm pretty sure that A and D also fit into this equation, huh? Hold on, I have to look. I got the answer in front of me if you want to, like, provide. Who's the answer? Say, so, right, uh, what's that? Is there explanation? It says the 15 and 3 quarters square foot skylight over the 20 square foot pipe shaft covers more than 3 quarters of the area of the shaft. All of the skylights are inadequate. That's all I have to yeah, I'm looking for it in here though. I have a, the same answer, but I want to be able to show you so where you can find it. Yeah. I want you guys to be able to find it. I'm going with you. I don't see where it says 20 feet. You said 15 feet, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, what if, I think it might actually be eight because it says not less than 15 square feet. Four times four is 16. But it says in the answer, B. That's why when I, I asked you guys, if you actually have to be able to do this, <laughs> I didn't have an answer for that one. For seven? Six. Oh, okay. Well, well a, a, would, a would fit there too. <laughs> what? That would be more than enough. Oh, that would be more than enough space. If you do, because if, if you do, if you do the four and a half, if you do uh, B four and a half times uh, three and a half, you get the fifteen point seven five, right? And you do four times four, you get sixteen. Square feet, so that fits. <laughs> and then if you do then you, if you do twenty times nine, that's more than enough. That's more than enough as well. So I guess the way they're doing that's it is the than, numbers. That's more than three quarters. The numbers that they gave you, I guess C and D, definitely are smaller. They're too small. Right. So it has to be A or B. So it have to be A or B. Uh, okay. Not less than fifteen square feet. Right. Not less. And 20 by, not, 20 by 9 is too big, is it? It's not less than 15, though. I mean, um, talk about being one of the two covers three boards, though. But, right? it, still co it still covers three boards. It's bigger. But anyway. the second second one is 5 by 4, which is 20 The feet. second one snugs in there nicely. Yeah. yeah. That's the but only they both, they, well, according to being less than 15 feet, both of them. Yeah. Both of them meet that criteria. Okay. So do we understand why it's B? Yeah. Are we okay with that? The, so the first one. So uh, if you get questions like that wrong, where multiple answers to be correct, that's like that's. Well, disheartening. remember I said pick the best one, and see I'm sitting here figuring it out with you. Like I'm telling you, like it, it, it gets that close where it says okay, four by four is more than fifteen, but twenty by not twenty by nine is hundred eighty. That's too big. So uh, this, uh, yeah. So the, this it talks about it doesn't, but it, it, it would be too big if it says it can't, you know, like right. if it's greater than you know twenty square feet. It says it cannot be less than fifteen square feet. So by the question of the following skylights, the one that meets the requirements of the paragraph right. in the skylight measuring would be A and both well, meet the requirement. If you're answering the question correctly. Preaching to the choir, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't make the, the test. So you, what, I think what they want you to do is they want you to be able to pull that measurement out and be able to use that measurement, like pick the better answer. Right. We get questions like this all the time on the on the state test. It's insane, yeah. and it, it's like that close. I personally, I don't know. I didn't see the test. I don't know what's on the test. But if you had to pick the two answers out of that, um, again, if I were giving you a classroom test. Either one of them, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. But I feel like if the, if the exams are that competitive, that you have to go to the extent of asking a stupid question like that, you might as well. I mean, my dad, my dad grew up in um, in Europe, Republic. so when he came over to America, he thought American education in terms of just having multiple choice was a joke. 
Right. They basically give you the answer that it's not. It's, you just have to memorize. They might as well have short answers in there. They might as well make the test harder instead right. of making questions like this. That's ridiculous. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> just search your head and work. Right. It's like, just make the test harder. Great. But do we know why it's the D? Do you get it? I know. Yeah. It's going to be one, less than one ten. Right. Well, the, they're looking at the five feet, five feet by four feet. That's the 20. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Are we good with that? Yeah. Even though we, we're, we're not really agreeing, we're agreeing to disagree, kind of, sort of. All right. So seven. It says, according to the last sentence, a shaft terminating below the top story of a structure must have a top with the same fire resistant rating as that required for the shaft enclosure. So seven to the Three hours. Where's the answer again? Uh, where in the where in the where fire? That? It says um, so it has a three-hour fire resistance. Yeah. Every shaft extending above the roof, except open shafts and elevator shafts, shall be enclosed at the top of the roof with materials having a yep. fire resistance rating of one hour and metal coating at least three quarters of the year in the shaft in the top story. That's why I pulled one. Yeah, that's why I pulled one. But I'm still wanting it for longer. I guess. What? Any shaft terminating below the top story of a structure and those stair shafts not required to extend to oh, the oh, oh, oh. shall have the top enclosed with materials having the same fire resistance rating as it's required to the that it's the shaft same fire rating. rating as so so the question says that, that if thought. it had a three hour fire resistance <laughs> rating oh, yeah. and, it, and it's it asking for the same Someone watched this book. book. That's what I'm talking Someone watched this book. You so see, you guys, you guys were in the last class. How many last, last week? How many? We had at least two or three. The bathroom. Like, exactly. Very yeah. questionable. Yeah. This is like every single question. <laughs> every single question you're speaking. Well, I, I promise next week I won't fight with the copy machine. For your friend, question. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Did, did, anyone, did anyone hear for me? We, you put B for one reason. Because yeah, the last sentence says um, right now. same fire right. resistance rating. So you have to like imply <laughs> that it's not one hour, it's three yeah. hours. Because of this because the question is like it hours. says in the paragraph one, but you gotta switch it to three. And then so I have the top enclosed with materials having the same fire resistance rating as required for the shaft yeah. enclosures. How yeah. do you imply that it's more of it says it's the same it fire says here, Because in the question in it says question. three hour fire resistant rating. Remember so you have to I use the same material for the time. for one hour. Remember I talked about tattoos last time? Mm -hmm. And I said, if you were here. Um, we said, remember, if you know something about tattoos, but it says something different in the question, don't go with what you know. Go with what it says. Even if you're absolutely sure about something, answer with what they're telling you. I know, I know, I know. I know. Oh my goodness. You have to read it. It's Are you going back and seeing the answer to that one just hurt me a bit? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Because the last sentence says it's the same. And if it's three hours, it has to be the same. And does it go past the roof? Does that make sense? Okay. I think you guys look spent. Yeah? <laughs> I promise you next week I will bring um, something that has definite answers and you can't fight me on it. You can try, you can try. And you won't be able to see the answers. I'll have them. Okay? So how about like a, just take a five minute break, five, ten minute break. And then we're going to do math. And I have, I brought stuff for you for math. Okay? Okay. This is about the calculators. Um, does anyone get a calculator? Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, um, I don't know. If you, I will see you guys today in the test. But um, no phone calculators. I went over this already. This is basically, the, that's why I keep making you guys practice on this. Just a basic calculator. Okay. That's what this says. 
Um, and what I did was um, I made a copy of a reference sheet for you, uh, which has formulas on it. Uh, last time we did area and uh, perimeter, and we did some volume. So I made a copy of that. And I also on here is some um, conversions. And for the guys that weren't here, I did a little um, a trick. Do you guys remember the trick, King Henry? King Henry doesn't usually try to vote. Do you know that? Really? Wait, what does that mean? King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Do you know that? No. No, okay. So it's um, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. So if they, I'm going to, are you looking at it like it's crazy? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It, it will though, I swear. What page are we on the pants on? I didn't do any, do any mail. I didn't, this was before I fought with the copy machine. I made you guys all copies. So um, this is for metric conversions. And metric conversions is basically if you have to go from like kilometers or this is kilo, this is hecto, this is deca. And this is the, this is your unit. Uh, meter, meter. Yeah, meter, meter. Uh, this is deci. Centi. And milli. So there are a couple of metric conversions on here. It has miles, yards, which we got confused with yards and feet converting yards to feet. So that's on here as well. Um, I thought it might help you guys. Time. Okay, tons. I don't know if you have to convert tons to pounds. So it's on here as well. So what this basically means is um, if you have one kilometer, right, you go over how many two millimeters? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sorry, what she is that on? It's not. I'm yeah, just talking to you. Oh, I thought you handed that out. No. I guess. Okay. I'm just telling you what's on here. Yes. But but these guys didn't see the King Henry. Okay? So basically you have a number and there's an imaginary decimal point. And your decimal point would be here. So you go one, two, three, four, five spaces. So we'll go that's how many, I don't know if I said millimeters or milliliters. So you don't even have to do anything with multiplying, adding. This goes for dividing. Does that make sense? Same thing if you were going from milliliters or millimeters to kilometers. If you were going from how many millimeter, millimeters to kilometers, you would just go the opposite way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just counting backwards. Yeah. So you don't have to multiply. It's just how many times do you move the decimal? OK? So. There's no math on here, it's just a reference sheet. Um, the second page, which you know I'll show you, it's a five-step method to solve the question. It's kind of like the same as that. It's you look at the questions, just what we were doing in reading. What are you being asked? What do you need to solve the problem? How are you going to solve the problem? And then just solve the problem, OK? Just something I thought you guys could use.
last time I showed you um, perimeter, I showed you side plus side plus side plus side. Um, they show you two lengths and two widths. You could do it either way. Okay. Um, I also, instead of using the book, I did, because um, we struggled a little bit with the algebra. Um, so I just made up this. It's kind of easy. Um, what's an algebraic expression? If you want to go over it, we probably can go through it pretty quick. Because I saw this in this book a few times. Oh, did I give you? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah some of them are stable. Some of them. Oh, that's my TA. So you just want? No, it's this one. expression never equals anything, right? Like it's like not equal to? An expression, yeah, there's no equal to. came up in the book a few times. Do you guys remember this? No? You weren't here. Was it last Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay. So um, we did some of the harder questions in the book. We went over some of the harder questions and um, algebraic expressions came up. Came up. So um, Sorry if this gets a little like out of out of order. Sometimes when it goes through the copy machine, my TA just staples it however it's in order. So um, an algebraic express you don't have to know the definition of anything. I've just wanted more just to, to solve it. Okay? So if we did 5x and 6x. 11x. How much? 11x. 11x. Yeah. So if you have two numbers. Um, with the same variable, <clears throat> so this is the same, right? You could just combine the five and the six to make eleven x. Okay, one problem. What grade do you teach again? Fifth and sixth. Do they do this stuff? Like, um, I don't, what's the math like? I was just curious. Like, do what's their math level like? Is this, yeah, they do is some of this. Like this. Fifth and sixth Not, this isn't fifth though. I think I this know, is I'm seven. Just okay. um, this makes sense. They don't learn this around that time. Yeah. 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 Sciences. yeah. I just tried. I tried to pull stuff from different grades just because yeah. I don't know where they're going to be looking. I don't know if it's going to be high school. I don't know. So I just tried to pull different grades. Um, this is this the same as this? No, no. No, so you cannot combine these two. Okay? Even though this is an X and that's an X, this is a different number. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what you guys remember, so. So, can you guys do uh, four, five, and six?
Yes. So this this goes to thirteen A minus three. So you can't simplify that anymore. You can't, because this is thirteen A. That's the answer. Thirteen A minus three. You can't take three away from thirteen because thirteen A is one number. Okay. This you can't separate these two. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. This one? Twelve X plus three. Twelve X plus three, yep. Yeah, we have to distribute this. Twelve X plus three. You remember that? Yeah. Um, seven, mental math? Seven P plus one. Seven P plus one? Yes. Seven P plus one? Mm -hmm. How about the next one? Zero. Zero, zero right? You have this nine. So, 15 X over three minus five right? X. How do I do that? Divide 15x by 3. Nope. Don't you put a 1 underneath the 5x? Um, and then you cross multiply? Oh, right. Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. 15x. Uh, that's minus. not it. That's not a. You can't, that's, you can't do that in that. Are those like terms? Why you gotta like cross them? You don't divide. What is a fraction? So you could simplify. Cross multiply, no? You can simplify this? Yeah, 5x. No. How do you do it? So you have to you have to do your like terms. So what are your like terms? 15x and 5x. 15x and 5x. But it's 15x thirds. The hard one. So is it 5x? Simplify it to 5x over. Don't look at me, you guys do it. Okay. Well, can you can you subtract fractions without unlike denominators? No. Oh, three times one is three, and then right, and then three times five is fifteen. What are you getting three times five? Because it's like five x. Denominator times numerator. So you're saying three times five x? Yeah. yeah. Like cross multiply. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you said before. You said cross multiply. Okay, so 15 x. Oh, to yeah. get to. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't do it that way. Sorry. Yeah, we'll do 15 x times one. And then three times five x. Oh, the butterfly way? Yes. Yeah, we're not allowed to do that. I'm sorry. How do you do it? We have to find like like the number. Oh, really? yeah, um, no, no, no. They made math. Either way, you can do it. So. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Swipe kids are struggling with one of Yes, it's absolutely 100% the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stay for a couple months. I understand. I doubt you're going to see anything like that. Do you understand? Like terms. You have to do the like terms. So, what's the answer, sir? You said that, didn't you? Yeah. I thought I heard a zero. I'm sorry. Yeah, I said that. So, did you? Yeah. Say, and you were looking at me. I'm like, no, don't you do it? Yeah. So this would be you'd have to get. It's not even. It's just zero. So it's just zero. It would be. It would be can. It would cancel itself out. Okay. So seventh grade math isn't that easy, is it? I'm so happy about school. About what? I'm so happy about school. We're all so happy about graduation. Um. Same. So I don't know if anything's going to be like on there like this, but 5k if k is negative 3? Negative 15. A negative number, just because you looked at him, negative times a positive is a negative. Positive times a positive is a negative times a negative is a negative times a negative is a positive. Positive. So it would be negative 15? Yeah. Negative 15. 
So it's uh, positive times positive equals positive, positive times negative equals negative, negative times negative equals positive. You're going to plug it into your calculator. Yeah. Yeah, you guys do that in calculator. So, um, yes, yeah, so you don't really need to know it. So, um, just look at the next. I'm going to leave you guys with these. So, I'm only going to do a couple. Okay, if you want to look at the next page. Do we all have the same thing? Is it 14 on the next page? So, you have 4z plus 5 minus z. Combine like terms. Fourteen. Okay. Four z plus five minus z. Four z plus five minus z. What are the like terms? Three z plus five. So the like terms are the z's, right? Yep. So you have four z minus z, which would be one z, right? So this turns out to be 3z, bring this down, plus 5. I got 5z plus 5. I, I, I um, subtracted z from z, or I added a z to z to cancel it out, and then added a z to 4z, adding like terms. So here's your like terms. Yeah. So if I were to like, Those are your two z's, so you have a 4z and a negative 1. So it's 4z minus 1. I thought you couldn't do that though, because you, can, you can't like go, like you can't, you can't do that without moving the 5. So by, adding, by moving the 5, you have to add or subtract one of them, right? or not? It's a, basically PEMDAS. Oh, okay. So you're just taking, a, taking it? One step at a time. Is that does that make sense? No? Did I confuse, am I confusing you? Did you confuse me now? No, I was just doing it the way that, like, my, my teacher used to yell at me all the time for not doing it, so. Tell me what your teacher told you. No, I just, I, so, I added, I put There's plus. There's multiple ways, there's multiple ways to figure out math. Okay, tell me. I, plus, I put a, like a positive z underneath z, and I added z to that to cancel it out. So then it was four z plus five. It just went back to four z plus five. What? All right, it went actually five z plus four. But but, but but there's no equal sign. Oh uh, yeah, uh, it equals, but then you have to find what equals. So that's not. Okay. You're right. You're right. I see what you said now. You have the equal sign. You can only do it. You have to do it on both sides. Yeah. Because you're trying to get. Are you talking about if you're trying to get rid of a, yeah. a variable? Yeah. Okay. No, this is just you're combining like terms. Yeah. So I think what you're thinking of is if, let's say, equals, um, um, I don't know, 45. Mm -hmm. So I'm still, I, I still kind of lost you. You would take five away from yep. here and exactly. five away from here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Are you lying? No, I swear to God. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm like, I'm not, like, I haven't been in high school for 4,000 years, so. Yeah, no, it's exactly what I thought it was. Okay. Okay. This is combining like terms. This is solving for the variable. Okay. Okay. Also, that's seeing what z actually is. But isn't it asking just to simplify as you Yeah. So, so this is just like if, so like terms means that um, you could combine all the z's. And let's say I showed you like 3a plus 2b plus 2a to the second plus 3c, okay? a, 2a, right? And this a are the same. So it would be 5a. This is like terms, right? So this would be 5a, mm -hmm. right? Then you have only one b, so it would be 2b, right? So we use that. And then you only have one of this, we use this, we use this. 2a to the second, we use this. That's it. You're not trying to solve it. You're just putting them all together. Okay. I don't have my folder, but there's my, do you need my folder? 
Jen needs to understand that I'm a complete disaster. Jen needs to understand that I'm a complete disaster. I can't even find my phone. Sorry. 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 Um, does that make sense? So 16 would be 2A plus 5 So 16. with this so that you can practice it, okay? Uh, maybe look on the other pages if there's anything. There's the, the other pages subtraction, okay? Any questions? You just looked up like you want to ask something. No, no. You sure? This is totally, this is this is adding something. This is like a whole nother level. No, no, no. But this is um, just combining like terms. No, you have to stay. <laughs> I'm forcing you. Okay. Um, do you want to take this with you? I know. I know. Yes. Yeah. I'm just giving a, I made another paper. This is estimating. Like, what would you estimate? And. Uh, terms. All right, so this one is estimating. Again, these are easy. Um, I just wanted to go through, like when you're, es you're reading something easy, you're estimating, you're not doing exact numbers, okay? Again, I looked through some of the questions in there. I tried to see what are the things that they're going to ask for. And one of them is estimating. See you later. Thank you so much. Should we start with this then? Yeah, we're going to look at this one. Do you want one of these? Mr. Cameron? How's it going, guys? See you later. Okay. You all know the paper that you need? Is that a test for now? No. Yeah, no. That's me. All right, so Kevin and his family traveled 23 miles by canoe on, when, on Monday. On Tuesday, they traveled 39 miles. And on Wednesday, they traveled 28 miles. About how many miles did they travel in all? So just add it over. So you do not have to do exact numbers. I mean, it's really easy. So what numbers are you going to use to estimate? C, C 23, 30, yeah. 24 and 30. So solve it. And you guys can use your calculators. So okay. I know. Let's hope all the questions are this easy. Right? Well, this is a reprieve from everything else that we've done. This is my third one being ass kicked for the last hour and a half. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is that, that's easy enough, right? So it's actually fun to do. Like the last paper. I always enjoy it. Because you're good at it. Some of us struggle a little bit more in that. I'm not that great at it. The family loaded. What is loaded? Are we adding or subtracting? Adding. 204 pounds of gear in the first canoe. They loaded. Adding, subtracting. Thank you. 28 pounds. So what would you use to estimate? 230. Thank you. I didn't think you 
guys are mine this week. They're easy, so you guys should go right through these. Oh, you're doing the whole packet? No, the second page is the same thing as estimating, and then the next page is identifying extra information, because when you read sentences, I mean um, problems, they usually put extra information in that you don't need. So after we go over the first two pages, over the extra information. Number three, Mr. Bach spent $209 on supplies that will last for five days. About what was the average cost of supplies for each day? What are the two numbers? And what am I doing? Dividing. Dividing, how do you know what word? Average. Average. So what was the answer? 41. So about. about, so we're doing about 40. 40, yeah, so you're going to do 205, okay? Number four, the Bach family rented two canoes. The total cost was $33 a day. About how much did it cost to rent the canoes for five days? Five and 30. How do you know that they want you to estimate? About. About. Yep. Yeah. About. So it's yeah. five and thirty. Yeah. And what do I do? Five. Five times thirty. Five times thirty. Five plus divide. So the total cost was thirty-three dollars a day. So you want to do it for five days? I know one day. I want to do five days. 30 times 2 times 5. Ah, I'm looking at the wrong way. Answer okay. for that small. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So what's my answer? 165. Who said 150? 150. 30 times 5. Oh, that's perfect. I was doing the actual thing. Yeah, 150. 
So when so the answer says it cost about about means we are estimating. Okay, they don't want the, the answer. Okay. Okay. On another five day canoe trip, the family travel see it's really easy. This is why I gave it to you guys, and you guys are going fast because you know it's easy. Make sure you read what you're doing. Okay? You guys are smart. On another five day canoe trip, the family traveled 153 miles. About what was the average number of miles they traveled each day? <coughs> what are my two numbers? 150 and 5. And what am I doing? Divide. Divide. How do you know? Average. Average, yep. And what's my answer? 30. 30. Good? Mm -hmm. Last year, 4,702 people canoed on the Silver River. This year, 578 fewer people canoed on the river. About how many people canoed on the Silver River this year? I got C. That's what. And what am I doing? How do you know? Fewer people. Fewer people. Good. Okay. See silly mistakes that you guys can make going fast. Get it? And about means to estimate. You guys got that? Okay. So for eight um, extra information, this came up on, um, you guys weren't here last time, but we had a question. In there. It's in this book. I don't remember what number it is, but I'll find it. And um, there was one sentence in there. It was like, was it like a quarter? It was one of the ones where they won the medal. Remember, they won the, the 6000 Oh, the uh, half the prize money? Yeah, half the prize yeah. money. And there was one sentence in there that absolutely you didn't need. So I said, maybe we can just look at a couple of easy problems and find information that you don't need. OK? Um, the number of calories a young child needs each day is about 106 times his or her weight in kilograms. Sally weighs 9 kilograms, and her brother weighs 14 kilograms. How many calories does Sally need? What's not needed? Wait, the brother's weight. The brother's weight. I didn't. The somebody Sally's somebody said something last. Sally's brother's weight. Sally's brother's weight, yeah. We don't need that. What's the answer? How many calories does she need? 954. How'd you get it? Nine times 106. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it makes sense. Nine times 106. Does that make sense? Easy? Okay. There are 360 calories in four cups of low fat milk. Each cup of whole milk has 150 calories. How many calorie calories are there in each cup of low fat milk? What's not needed? Number of calories in whole milk. You see? There are 360 calories in four cups of milk. Each cup of four is milk. How many calories are in milk? No, I think you need the number of calories. The calories are the whole milk. You don't need the whole milk. You don't need the whole milk. Because right? it's four cups of milk. I see. 360 calories in four cups of milk. Oh, so it's. We agree? Yeah. See? How many calories are in low fat milk? 90. How'd you get it? Divide 360 by 4. 360 by 4. A 16-year-old boy needs 3,600 calories a day. A 65-year-old man needs 2,500 calories a day. A 10-year-old boy needs 2,300 uh, calories a day. How many more calories does the 16-year-old need than the 10-year-old? What don't you need? B. B. We don't care about the 65. The 16-year-old needs blank more calories. How'd you get it? Subtraction. Which one? <coughs> From. Uh, what two numbers? 36, 
2300. I know that sounds redundant, but some people, they, they see numbers and they might subtract the wrong two numbers. That's what I just did. Did you? I'm sorry. <laughs> did you do 25 and 23? No, I did 36 and 25. Oh, 25, yeah. Okay. Um, the food Susie ate on Monday had 2,047 calories. The food she ate on Tuesday had 2,103 calories. And the one she ate on Wednesday had 1,847. How many calories in all were in the food she ate on Monday and Wednesday? That's not needed. Calories on Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday yep. How many calories did she have? 3894. That's right. I want to trust you. Yeah. You have calculated. So I'm assuming you added Monday and One Wednesday. Monday. Yep. A large apple has 117 calories. A banana has 59 more calories than an apple. An orange has 49 fewer calories than an apple. How many calories does an orange have? What information is not needed? family ate boiled eggs for breakfast. Each person had three eggs. How many calories did each person eat? What's not needed? because it was easy and fast and I don't want you guys to see something easy and then just slide right through it and make mistakes. Okay, so just like I, you weren't, were you here when I timed them? Sorry? Were you here when I timed them? Um, last week? This week. You, you came late. I came last week on Thursday I think it was and I was late today. Yeah, okay, so I timed them today and they gave them three minutes to do something and my friend here like literally started to sweat. Mm -hmm. So um, I did that to show them that, like, you know, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be nervous the day of. So just to kind of, you have, you have time, so relax. And then I'm showing you this because you're going to see things that are easy and you're going to rush through and you're going to make some silly mistakes. 
Okay, so to take your time and really relax and read through the questions. And then I had put this over here because again, I said it's redundant, but um, it's, it's really <clears throat> the only way to pass the test, is to take your time to read and to read it again, okay? Um, is there any questions on anything so far? Any questions on anything that you saw in the books, the math book? <coughs> I had like 400 of them that we were going through. Nothing? So you want to go back to that? Do you need a two minute break? Do <laughs> you want to take a walk? Yeah, I'm going to take a yeah, okay, I'm go, ahead. Out for a bit. go ahead. I'm going to just like drive over here. That's a long day. So, so we'll take a break? No, because these guys weren't here. So, um, I never got an answer on the, the wrong question. Remember the question we thought was wrong? From last week? Yeah, you weren't here. Yeah, from last week. I still. I, I don't, remember. I'm, I remember you talking about it. Yeah, the one where um, it's it's in this book, right? Yeah, the math book. The one about the bike. The bike. The nine point one or eight point yeah, nine. Yeah, eight point nine, and so it's really kind of um. In the classroom. Question fifty four. So we have a discrepancy with uh, number 54. Have any of you, have you seen, oh, you didn't even see this book, right? This is the math. And I've actually asked um, a friend who's like a mathematician, and, and everyone seems to get nine. What, you got it? Uh, no, I was just thinking, if it's, so it's two miles per hour left. So they're going two miles for every hour left. So maybe we just break it down like that. Are you one of 54? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Wait, it's the one that a cyclist bikes X distance at three miles per hour? 10 miles. Um, yeah, it's we were supposed to do that last class. We never got it, right? 54, yeah. Well, remember? Did y'all get the answer for it? We got, no, I, I keep getting the same answer yeah, from yeah, seven remember, people is nine. Because it's between 10 and yeah. the And the, um, so I, I'm That's simply apologizing because the key answer I keep getting is. It's four. It's nine. Well, we got nine, but the right one's four. The right, right one is uh, 8.9, yeah. is what it says in the book. I remember that. But why? I can't give you that answer. That's my so problem. Um, so what they say, what they say is that the distance traveled is two x, and the travel time is x over ten. So they're making a ratio, and I can't. Everyone that I've asked no, keeps getting nine. So did anyone? That's what I'm saying. Did anyone try that? So why don't we ask our two new friends to try it and see what they get? What page is this? Sorry, it's um, sorry, it's twenty five. Yeah, it's in the math. So what were you finished saying? Um, that's like the only thing this question says is like a difference of two miles per hour. What are we supposed to do with that? Um, I don't know what I'm just saying. That's why it makes sense that it would be nine between 10 and 8. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, Jason. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you could explain that to me. Oh yeah, the average of eight and ten is nine. Well, what I did was I oh, did yeah. miles to hour. I did eight to ten over one to eight over one. Two x equals eighteen to one. It's also not asked. I don't think it doesn't ask how long, <clears throat> like how many miles it might be. So I don't think. I think it's that. I'm not sure. I still don't know how to get it. What is the cyclist average average rate for the round trip in miles per hour? So 10 plus 8 divided by 2 would be 9. Um, that's not how I got it. It doesn't give an explanation. 
It does, but the explanation, so the explanation, um, yeah, 54. So basically what they say is the distance traveled is 2x, which I had. You have to do that twice, right? Because you're going there and back. So well, that would be, that would be the 2x. So distance one way is x. Yeah, and then the other, and then, so it's, it would be 4x together, right? Because it's there and back. No, so distance is x. So 2x is both ways, right? So then it says travel time is, that's one, it's like a, a flea. So it's x over 10. It says plus x over 8. Um, no, that's 10. Over 8. Right? And then it says equals 4x over 40 plus 5x, which nobody seems to understand where they got that from. I don't know. I think I'm right. I think you're right, too. Mm -hmm. I'll go with you. It also does say approximately 8.9, which could be rounded up to 9. Right? Yeah, it does say. Approximately. Well, when you do it on the calculator, it's like 8.999, whatever. Which is 9. What did you guys get? I'm going to ask my smart friend from college. I, I asked my <laughs> smart friend. Oh. He's an engineer. Mm -hmm. Do you guys understand it? I mean, I got 9. I got 9. So we'll, we, we all agree and we go with 9? And it anyone not have? 9? We all agreed that the book is wrong. Everyone that I've, I've asked oh, wow. has given me the answer of nine, and these are like mathematicians. So I'm apologizing, and I'm apologizing to the camera as well, because <laughs> I can't, everyone that I've asked has given me the answer of nine. I need them. Um, <laughs> oh, patterns? Are you guys okay with patterns, finding patterns? I can grab. Um, no, so I have another one. So like if they give you a number, um, what's the next number? How do you go from here to here? How do you go from here to here? Well, what are you doing? Are you going up or down? Down. 40. Down. So you're going down by 40, right? This is going down by 20. No, I just, I just showing you a pattern. Okay. Don't get nervous. Like multiples divided by 20. So it can be divided by two also. So what could the next? What would the next one be? Ten. Ten. We're going up. It would be a hundred. No, I don't know. That's why I. Asked. Um, no, you just, I just asked you for the next one in the pattern. Oh. So just looking at a pattern, this one could be down by forty, down by twenty. If the next one, if it was following me, the twenty, it would be either be zero. I'd have to give you one more really to follow it. Okay. So let me let me give you one full one. I just asked you if you guys, uh, so zero, 10, here's an easy one. Zero, 10, 20, 30. How do you go from zero to 10? Plus 10. Plus 10. How do you go from 10 to 20? Plus 10, plus 10. What would the next one be? 40. Do you see the pattern? So the pattern is plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. Okay. Um, here's a harder one. Plus 21. Yeah. Right? Because it's plus one every... You're going up? The next one will be 85, right? 
that's how I see it. Maybe five, right? So one plus 21 is 22? 22, I can't do mental math like this, really. <laughs> How did you figure that out? It's very impressive, 43. So this is plus 21, and then you have... You have calculator, just put it with that. Plus 21. Do you see the pattern? You have a calculator. I can't just look at this and do it, really. I, I haven't touched my calculator. <clears throat> the point is not that you're going to show Danielle up. The point is that you see the pattern. <laughs> Get it? That makes sense? Yeah. OK. Sometimes there are patterns that's like, um, up one, down two, up one, down two, okay? So that was also in here. Um, let's see. Pardon interruption, if you are the owner of a white Buick, license plate number H, N H, 2135, please come to the main office to see Jen. Once again, if you're the owner of a white yeah. Buick, then they get you license plate H. Nah, H, 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 no, I don't feel good about that. <laughs> um, okay, so the reason why I'm showing you this, which these guys know, because there's going to be a lot of charts. I hear that there's charts on the test. You have to be able to read a chart. Um, so 11, the price of a seven-minute direct call to New York, New York, when you call in the evening. Wait, what page are we on? 48. 48. Sorry. So you're looking at a direct call in the evening for seven minutes to New York. What do we have to do? Multiply 26 by 10. Where did you find 26? It's the each additional each additional minute for the call in the evening. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is we're looking at the evening. Okay. And then, well, first thing we do is try to find New York. And it's under evening, which is 0.26. And you're multiplying it by how much? Oh, same thing. Six. 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 And then you're adding the extra 38 cents. Yeah. Where do you get 38? So the first minute. First, first minute. Okay. Mean you double that four. Yep. I'm going to trust you because I don't have that one. Oh, I got mine. Hmm? I got it on mine. Good. That what you have? I didn't do it on the calculator. I'm still like kind of just like looking at the chart. Doing this in head. Okay. So the first thing you have to pull out of that is that we're making a direct call to New York. So find New York. Okay. So it says you're, you're for seven minutes. Okay. So your first minute is 38, 38 cents, right? Yeah. And then every minute after that... It's 26, 26 cents. Oh, so it's 6 times 26. Right. Okay. And then plus 30. Right. So you have to, we would have to multiply this times 0.26, right? Which, I don't know the answer to that. What is that? All right, so it's 156, and then plus 38, point 38, plus 38, 194. Do you understand why? Everyone gets it. <coughs> yeah. 
Okay. So they're really testing to see that you can pull out information, follow steps, and look at a chart. Okay? It says, what's the difference? What do you hear? What do you do when you hear difference? Subtract. Subtract. Good. In cost, in the cost of a seven minute direct, dial direct call to New York and a seven minute person to person call. So we already know seven minutes to New York. Now we have to figure out seven minute person to person call. Person to person call. B. So person to person is. Let me see the difference, right? So it's three dollars. Three dollars, right? And dial direct. Doesn't it also be like where the person is dialing from, or? I think it's uh, from Orlando. I think they just want to know if a person's a person. And you also got to add in how far away. Uh, shit. Like, how much is a person to person per minute? Three dollars. Yeah. Is that all they want to know? What, is, what does that mean? That's a great question because the difference would be. Oh, okay. uh, all right. How so do I know what is seven minutes at work? It's B. But that's the questions were ordered wrong. Yeah, that was really confusing. I thought they wanted. Yeah, the difference would mean subtract. So that question is the answer is B. All right. I thought it would be multi, but that question's worded wrong. You okay? My brain hurt. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that so much. Yeah, I'm Seriously. sorry about that one. So um Yeah. Because it doesn't tell you when the person is calling from the Right. It just says that they're calling from New York. I'm well, glad you guys were just as confused. Yeah, that was. I only picked that because that was the only number that I saw that was on the chart. The three, three dollars. dollars. Yeah. Because it doesn't tell you when the people from New York are calling. From the weekend, the evening, the the, the weekday. So how do you know what to add up? Yeah. I went around. I circled all all the way across. So the answer is B. What's the price of a 12 minute operator assistant station to station call to Miami, Florida on a Tuesday at noon? That's a little more clear, isn't it? Yeah. 12 minute operator assistant assisted to station to station. Station to station, you just bought some. We're calling from one. Yeah. How many miles is Miami in New York? No, it's from Orlando. Orlando? Great question. I would. Especially on how far away it is. I would go with 23 to 3,000. 
Because yeah. Orlando is definitely not 20 minutes away. Miami's all the way at the bottom. Yeah. Orlando's yeah, like that's, in the middle. It's another fabulous question. Tools because no. I guess you could plug the numbers in too, right? I got it. You could plug in the cents for the station to station and get the right number. I had to plug in first to see how far away it was, yeah. then I got it okay. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous question. Let's work backwards. Let's get the answer. I'm checking the answer to see if I got this right. <laughs> yeah. Did you get it? I feel better now. Was um was it the twenty three to three thousand miles? Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a thousand. The difference they're separated by over almost eleven hundred miles. How did you know that? Oh. Search those. <laughs> okay. I had to. Not a well well I know it's definitely more than twenty three miles, but it's definitely but even if you didn't know that, like let's just say that you're I not using like outside knowledge. Horribly written. You would have to just plug in the numbers, right? From station to station until you get one of the answers. Yeah. 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 Which probably that's, takes you a while. That's that's not a good <laughs> That's really irritating. It is a it is a test taking tactic. <clears throat> I guess you can waste some goddamn time. For the, this question? Yeah. Um, three dollars? Or wait, which question are we on? Thirteen. Oh, I'm still thinking about the lines of the Okay, three dollars? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the problem with the, that question is it says what's the difference? And difference means normally to subtract. Mm -hmm. But they don't give you anything to subtract. Okay. That's why you're confused. Yeah. The entire class was confused, including your teacher. <laughs> Terribly confused. So this entire video that's going out to whoever is going to see it, the, the teacher spent three, three quarters of the class confused. Fabulous. 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 Great. So proud of myself. You know the last question, the one with the, the 9.0 we were doing earlier? Yeah. My friend said it's either 9.09 .09 or 8.9. It can't be 9 because you need another variable. Or, and, and it can't be nine also because it's, uh, the rate would be contingent on the time or distance. You that is way that too means. smart and I don't even understand that. That's what I'm saying, I told Tell him. Tell it, well. Too much maths. Well, well, then we, that's just, why I didn't like major. You know what we need? We need to see it like completely written out the yeah. entire explanation. I don't, contingent is just not, I don't it's understand crazy. that. <laughs> you you tell tell him I don't get it. You gotta put it up on the snowboard over there. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand him, so. <laughs> I don't understand what that means. I think the question is broken. <laughs> You're not going to get one like that. We don't have another variable. Yeah, that's, that's why it's broken. Okay. Now I'm confused. I'm going to go home and it's going to like wrap my brain even more. Do you know 13? B. Oh, B. Yeah, we know that. 13, you got B? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, What's the difference in price for a nine minute dial direct call to Los Angeles, California at 10 a.m.? See the difference between 12 and 14 now? 12 gives you a time on a weekday and the same call made in the evening.
What's the first minute? First minute for Los Angeles. Are we talking about for evening or for the morning? Of the morning. Uh, sixty-four cents. Okay. And each additional minute is forty-four cents. So this is first minute. Okay. So this is forty-four times how much? Eight. What is it? Three dollars and fifty-two cents. Three fifty-two? Yep. And then you get four sixteen from that. So this is the day, right? Yeah. And the night? Uh, we'll to to uh for the first minute it's thirty-nine cents. And then for the evening it's twenty-seven. Times eight, right? Yeah, it's twenty seven. And that's two dollars and sixteen cents. Yeah, so you get two fifty five. And then you subtract two four sixteen from two fifty four. You get a dollar sixty one total. How much is it? Dollar sixty one and change. Thank you.